Welcome back to the Dark Reading News Desk. Terry Sweeney here with Benny Charney, founder and CEO of OpSWAT. Benny, thanks so much for joining us on the Dark Reading News Desk. Terry, thanks so much for having me again. We are uh, talking about the topic du jour of AI. It's, uh, it's really transformed the industry, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Uh, we're, we're obviously seeing an increase in the sophistication of, of malware attacks thanks to AI. Talk a bit about how cyber criminals are leveraging AI um, and what prevention-based technologies um, organizations should be considering for protection. So whenever we look at AI in cyber defense, AI is more of a double-edged sword. On one end, the attackers are using AI, and on the other end, the defenders are using AI. So let's be also specific here, the attackers are using AI to go and generate threats based on either data or network traffic, and the defenders are leveraging AI for detection. Again, detection, right. what type of algorithm detection we can improve that the AI, the attackers will be able to go and pass. So the whole thing and the big trend that we see at least happening is removing detection from the equation. Because if you don't need to detect anything, right? And how can you really do that, right? It's magic, right? How can you still have a very deterministic cybersecurity prevention without the ability of detection? And with, with, with a big trend, and whenever we see whether kind of, we see many attack vectors, AI generated, whether it's uh, using social engineering or whether it's using a polymorphic or pretty advanced polymorphic tools to go and change files and inject files. Our approach is let's remove detection from the equation. So this is one approach, which means it's called CDR, content design reconstruction. So we, uh, and we find very effect effective against AI born threats, which means it's just regenerating the data flow. Okay, so, uh, so are you turning detection over to, like, that basically just gets automated and it, it's, it's, it's off the table in terms of processes and functions that yeah. occur in the SOC? Yeah, I mean, think about that. I mean, why do you need to get detection? Okay, you're getting a file, or you're getting a URL, or you're getting some network traffic. Now, if the file that you receive, you can regenerate this file in a very secure and fast and accurate way without really losing usability. Okay and this is one, or you're getting a URL. You can actually rewrite the URL and get the URL to go into kind of okay. pretty much go into another safe zone and browse from there. You can actually start eliminating the elements to a point that even pretty advanced uh, or advanced attacker using machine learning to okay. change the files, change the URLs, social media, or, yes, or whatever to go and get to, would find really, really tough time to go into your network by removing the detection. Now, that's kind of one approach that we, we see and we see. And, and the reason I'm saying that, because again, we, we, we deliver, we manufacture a CDR solution, and because of the increased attack surface, we see also an increase of using our CDR engine. Okay, so content disarm and reconstruction, uh, CDR, as you've referred to it. Um, for viewers who are new to that concept, can you just break that down a bit as, as what that is? Okay, so CDR is very much a very simple, three stages process, okay? So first, the first thing that you need to go and get is identify what is the file type, right? So kind of, what are you getting? Is that a JPEG? Is that a Word document? Is that a video file? Is that an, what are you really getting? So number two that is happening in the CDR is that you need to go over and very much pass through the whole file. It's a very kind of, you need to go and understand what's in the file. If it's a JPEG, where is kind of, where is the data images? What's the compressor? If it's a Word document, okay, what's kind of, it's a very complex file, so going over everything there. So after you analyze the file, stage two, stage three is regenerating the file. So creating a new okay. file okay. that includes all of the foundations, and that's, that's on files. If it comes to URL, you're actually rewriting the URL to redirect to somewhere else, and then it could be either uh, outside the organization, could be straight to a TI platform, and then from there on, you can go and pretty much use that. Okay. Thank you, that, that's helpful. Um, with that in mind, organizations often will prioritize network perimeter protection, um, but they also need to look at compromised endpoints in critical places like that. Talk about how threat intel can help organizations understand and, and defend against, say, hackers' techniques, 
tactics and procedures um, to really have a more effective enterprise security strategy. So whenever we look at TI and, and, uh, and uh, so I can talk also more about uh, AI and how we use AI in TI, in TI, or first let's talk kind of the basic of TI in the global platform. So whenever you look at TI, we, need to, we can look at uh, data, we can look at endpoints, and we can look at uh, network, right? So the, 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 pretty much the three parameters or the three elements that we kind of look at the, at the prim primitives that we look at, the, at any network. So whenever you look at data, so whether you see a file or components of the file, I mean, any, any, any file today is more of an archive, it includes multiple components of different files. You want to see how pretty much TI and what data you get on each one of these parts of the file to a point you can get informed decision whether you want to get this file in your organizations or not. Okay. Right? The, whenever you're looking at a device, a device is a collection of many, many, many files, network access, activities, registry, and so on. Also, all, also each one of these elements can be, and also the correlation between these elements can be compared to a, to a TI platform that includes all of these IR rules or compromise or indication of compromise, you want to compare the data to. Okay. Whenever you go to the network, then it's, just, uh, it's either DNS records or URLs or IP addresses that you can go and go and also correlate to all of this specific platform. The, the recent acquisition of, of Inquest that, that OpSwat made, um, uh, the strategic advantages that, that Inquest brings to the company and um, how it will just really add to your own product line. So Inquest is a cybersecurity company, been around for uh, over 10 years, founded by a DOD special ops team. I mean, I, I know Mike Alcamon and the CEO and Pedro the CTO for years. Actually, they've been our customers at the yeah. Pentagon whenever they operated the SOC there. It was years ago before they kind of decided to leave the Pentagon and, and form their own company. Uh, so. It's a, and they have a larger team in Austin, and uh, it's an amazing team of fine individuals. Pretty much the best you can dream, dream of folks that pretty much dedicate their life but protecting critical infra, the most critical infrastructure. Think about the most, okay. the, the biggest military out there from uh, cyber criminals. So this is kind of first the talent behind that. And so what they've built, they built a, a full NDR network detection and response that is built on TI platform, built on OpSort, and, and built on network sensors that pretty much analyze network traffic of uh, very kind of very complex and very, uh, uh, very complex and pretty much classified networks for everything happening and trying to analyze whether this network is compromised or not. And so they bring a lot of expertise of that, specifically in the DOD. So what they bring uh, to the table right now is our ability now to offer NDR network detection and response okay. to our customers, an accelerated federal uh, team to OpsWap. So it includes also secure facility, it includes pretty much uh, really help us expand our support for our federal government. Um, and then three is a threat intel, a pretty robust threat intel okay. uh, that they've built, they collected the pattern with so many, and we plan to now integrate that with our threat intel that we get from Medif and the cloud, FileScan.io, pretty much all of the threat intel that we collect. And now we have a super threat intel that includes pretty much the merger of these uh, two companies together. And, and the cool thing is that also we tie the threat intel not only to the Inquest product, to the entire OpsWap portfolio. So that's actually work together. So it's, um, for us, it's a pretty smooth thing because we know each other for yeah. like many years. We've been working together. We've been uh, protecting together similar customers. Yeah. So now it's going to be so much more natural. It's, it's, you don't need to deal with two companies. You just deal with one. As you look at all across the landscape, how can you imagine AI impacting the, the future of, of threat intelligence? Um, so, what, what do you see there? So in, to, to be very brief is event correlation. So the cool thing is threat intel includes so many different indications of compromise. So what we can go in and get is, first, uh, is very much getting the correlation between creating automated Yara rules and also decreasing false positives because AI is a great data uh, securing house for false positives, because whenever you get all of this data, you don't want this kind of all of this. Uh, you don't want you want to really minimize the amount of false positives to a point you can be 
say with determination this is a threat and this is the damage this threat is going to go and create or not, it's a false positive. So great, great support on generation, also clearing house for false positives. Great stuff. Benny, thank you for joining us on the news desk and having us think a lot differently about threat intel and AI and the, the future of detection. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Terry. We've been talking to Benny, Ops, Benny Charney, founder and CEO of OpSWAT. This has been Terry Sweeney for the Dark Reading News Desk. Thanks for joining in this segment.